Thanks for watching our video this week. Uh, this video is going to cover installing Ubuntu. I'll be using Ubuntu 11.04, that's the Natty Narwhal release. I'll also be using VirtualBox to install it. Uh, but do take note that the same process will be used if you're actually installing it on your physical machine. There shouldn't be much difference. Um, other than maybe being a little faster uh, than what I'm currently doing here. Uh, but you'll go ahead and you'll boot the computer with the live CD in it. In my case, since I'm using VirtualBox, I'm using the live ISO file instead of the physical disk itself. Uh, once again, no difference, it's just a virtual CD. Uh, once you boot the live CD, you're going to notice you're going to come almost all the way into Ubuntu. Um, and a dialog box will pop up. This box will give you two options. And this is where we will kickstart our installation. You'll notice on the left we have a language selection. I'll leave English at the default. Drag that up so we can see a little better. The two options we have is try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. Now if you're not familiar with Ubuntu, if you've never used it before, if you're not familiar with Linux, I would highly suggest you try Ubuntu before you commit to an install. Our second option is to install it and that is of course what we will be doing today. So we'll click on install. Our next dialog box that pops up, we'll do a three point check. Uh, the first point is to make sure that you have 4.4 gigabytes worth of data uh, or hard drive space free. The second point is to make sure that you're plugged into a power source. Uh, that's mostly so you're, if you were installing this on your laptop, your laptop doesn't die halfway through the installation process. Because depending on your options that you pick at the start of the install, it can take a little while to install. The third option is to make sure that you're connected to the internet. Lastly, we'll see there's a little checkbox down here that allows us to download updates while we're installing. That will prolong the installation process. Usually I'll leave that unchecked and I'll update it once I get the system installed. There's also a note here about using third-party software. Um, MP3 codecs, uh, some video playback codecs, DVD playback codecs. Also, wireless hardware and some graphics cards all require restricted drivers or third-party software to be used. There's a note about that. Um, I usually select the box here to install the Fluendo MP3 plug-in pack. That's just one less thing I have to worry about installing once I get the system up and ready to use. Now our next dialog box that will pop up will give us two more options. Now one is to use the entire disk and install Ubuntu. The second option is something else. I will go ahead and click into something else even though this is not the option I'm going to take. Now that way we can at least show it off and see what's in there. Uh, this will take you to a partition editor. Um, this will allow you to set up a partition for Ubuntu. If you're using, say, a dual boot setup, if that's your aim, this may be the route you want to go. That way you can pick the free space, set up a partition within it, set it to boot, and uh, tell it to format to the XT4 file extension, and click Install Now, and let it take off and install on a certain partition. In our case, I'm just going to use the entire drive, uh, this is pretty much just a, a pretty fresh partition that I've set up under VirtualBox, so there is some data there, nothing I'm scared about losing. So I'm going to select to use the entire disk. That will format the entire disk and load Ubuntu on it. So I'll take that option, and I'm going to click on Forward. Now this screen is kind of a confirmation screen. It's going to let us know that the entire disk will be used. It's going to install Ubuntu on a disk labeled SDA, and it's going to be the EXT4 file extension and the entire capacity of that drive is 85.9 gigs. You will notice that there's a note at the bottom saying there's going to be two partitions that's going to be deleted. That's because I had some existing data on this virtual drive. So I'm good with that. I'm going to click on Install Now. You'll notice down at the bottom there is a little status bar that will tick up and we can watch it. Um, but as it's doing that, uh, we can come up here and we can actually complete some setup information. The first question they ask is about where are we? Where are we located? This is so we can pick our time zone. I'm located on the eastern side of the US, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that as default. Um, the New York time zone is fine with me. I'm going to click on forward. Our next screen will allow us to set up a keyboard layout. I'm going to leave it at the default, USA, USA. As you can see, there's many choices here. There's also a test box you can pick. You can punch in some keys from your keyboard and make sure that the default layout matches. You can also have it detect your keyboard layout automatically. Like I said, I'm just taking the defaults and clicking forward. 
All right, this next screen allows us to set up our user profile. Now, this will be for the first user that's going to use it. I'm the only user, so I'm going to call it Techie Smarts as my username. Um, leave the default name for the computer's the PC name. Um, our password here, usually you'd want this to be a pretty strong secure password, especially if it's on a laptop. Uh, this is just a virtual box I'm strictly using for testing and making these videos. So I'm not too concerned about the security on it because I'm not going to be handling sensitive information. I will leave it at default to require my login password. And you can also choose to encrypt your home folder. Personally, I'm not taking that option in this in this video. If you are on the go a lot and you're using a mobile machine, I would recommend probably doing that. Now, once you're done setting that up, that's about all we can interact with um, as far as the setup process goes. You'll notice at the bottom it will continue. Uh, we get treated to a little slideshow here uh, that will cover some basic uses for your computer. You'll notice our first slide here will tell us about the Ubuntu Software Center. If we click on Next, uh, we'll see that the first task that most people use their computer for is photo management. You'll notice that there's a little section there just to the left of our picture. Let's click back here. That will give us the name of the software that's included uh, in the default installation that will help us with those tasks. It also allows you to, to see a recommendation by Canonical to see what they recommend. The next slide here will talk about being mobile. Now, of course, when you're mobile, you'd like to have your data synced. That way you have access to the same data on all your different platforms. You can do this using Ubuntu One. It's a free service, at least up to two gigabytes of cloud storage for you to store your music, your office files, your PDFs, your bookmarks from your browsers, individual files, things of that nature can all be stored to Ubuntu One. What will happen is that will sync itself to the cloud, uh, to an Amazon cloud storage server. Um, for you to access on not only this machine but other other machines, some mobile devices also have Ubuntu One apps. I know the Android Marketplace has one there. I'm not sure about iOS, but I know the Android does. Our next tab here will discuss taking your music with you, uh, being mobile with your music. Um, this kind of ties into Ubuntu One. Uh, they have included an Ubuntu One music store. It's pretty competitive with Amazon's pricings. Um, it's a it's a growing catalog. When they first introduced it, the catalog was somewhat limited. However, now it's it's pretty impressive. By default, they include the Banshee music player uh, to play back the media. Um, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, Banshee's pretty much like any any of the other standard media players. Um, pretty easy to navigate. Self-explanatory. Click on Next. Uh, email and chat is another very prominent use for everyday computer. You'll notice there on the uh, left, you'll notice that Empathy Instant Messenger and Evolution Mail. Like I said, if you click on back, you're going to notice that each one of these tabs kind of gives you a quick little overview as to other software that is handy for that use. Uh, but you'll notice that if you click the next tab, there's also a social tab in this slide show. Um, this pretty much lets you know that you can utilize social networks straight off your desktop using the Me toolbar or the Me notification area on the, on the default desktop. Basically, the whole purpose of it is to allow you to update your social networks without having to log into every website. It can be your, your hub to those social networks. Um, it's pretty handy. If you click on Next, one of these last tabs here will tell us about browsing the web. By default, Firefox is the default web browser. Um, you can always install more. Let's click the Next tab. This slide tells us about Office use. Um, in this release, we have LibreOffice instead of OpenOffice. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with LibreOffice, LibreOffice is a forked project from OpenOffice.org. Um, once Oracle purchased Sun Microsystems, once they acquired them, um, OpenOffice kind of exchanged hands, and LibreOffice has forked out of that. If you're looking for the most recent and most current update to the OpenOffice project, this is the way it's going, so this is the route that you'll more than likely want to take. Finally, the last tab we have is about customizing Ubuntu. Uh, just like with any other modern operating system, you can change your wallpapers, your themes, things of that nature. Uh, now with this release, we do have the Unity desktop built in, so that makes things just a little different, which we'll cover pretty soon. Our next tab is pretty much a thank you tab, just saying thanks for using Ubuntu. If you have any questions, feel free to swing by the Ubuntu.com forward slash support website for any help. 
I will say that the Ubuntu forums are extremely helpful. If you have any problems, that's usually the first place I recommend to start searching. You'll notice down at the bottom of the screen, uh, our little status bar is still ticking up. This will take a little while. It's going to continue installing. So I'm going to fast forward the video um, up to the point where we can interact with it again. All right, we're just about done with the install. Uh, once it's done, this little box will pop up and let you know that you need to uh, until you need to remove the installation media and reboot. So, click OK. Now, while it's coming back up. we need to eject the disk do this by clicking on devices go down to CD and DVD devices go over and you'll notice you'll find the check mark on the live ISO we want to click the host disk um, host drive D uh, that's that's where I'm just going to select it that way if I do have to put a DVD in it'll pull straight off that drive from the host and now our machine is going to reboot. Now as it reboots we're going to be able to see exactly what our installation has done for us. Uh, we're going to make sure that it works uh, first off. The installation does take a little bit. Um, be patient. Uh, it'll finish up pretty quick. A lot of that's also depending on the options you select during the during the setup. Also your bandwidth on your internet connection when it's downloading packages and the, and the language packs and things of that nature. You'll notice we saw the Ubuntu splash screen. And here we are. I'm back at my, my login, if you remember right. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to scale mode so we can see the entire desktop. Uh, I named my profile Techie Smarts. Punch in my password. Now, the first box we get, and this is because I'm using VirtualBox, uh, you would also see this if you're using a machine that wasn't up to the hardware specs of Unity it's going to let us know that it can't load Unity and that it's going to load Ubuntu Classic instead. I prefer Ubuntu Classic. Um, I've been using Ubuntu for several years now and I've always been happy with its default layout. Um, Unity is a little different for me but for the sake of the video I will show how to use Unity, um, how to navigate it, and how to get it set up using this virtual box. Um, this is where this video will deviate a little bit. If, you're, if you've installed this on a physical mach machine that's up to the specs of Unity You'll already have Unity loaded up and you'll be ready to go. Um, but in our case, we need to install the guest editions. In our situation, we need to install VirtualBox guest editions. What that'll do is allow us to enable the OpenGL rendering in VirtualBox that Unity needs by default to be able to run. Uh, so this is takes just a moment. I will speed up through this um, here in just a moment just to make sure we can get through it fairly quickly. I'm not too worried about the update manager at this point. I want to get Unity up to a usable state uh, before I go ahead and do any updates. Um, if you are using this on a machine, like I said earlier, that is up to the specs for Unity, then you can go ahead and do the updates. That's no big deal. Um, or you can choose them whenever you whenever you prefer. You'll notice that this is you know pretty stock standard Ubuntu uh, that we're all used to that we all know and love. Got your virtual desktops, your recycle bin. The only thing really different, which isn't that different because it's been incorporated in the last several Ubuntu releases, is this me notification section up here in the toolbar uh, or in the taskbar. They did move the system settings under the the shutdown button. Uh, so if you're looking for a way to to change something, that's that's where it's at. And that's where that setting will say during Unity. I'm going to go ahead and close this because we're not going to need this right now. Now, if you're not fond of Unity 
I will show you how to remove Unity or even just turn it down to Unity 2D, uh, which takes a little less resources. Um, that's possibly for our next video. Now that we have guest editions installed, we're going to go ahead and we're going to log out. No real need to reboot or shut down all the way. So we just log out. We're going to uh, come down here. Okay, I don't see Unity there, but it says Ubuntu. It says Ubuntu by default, so uh, default Ubuntu and 11.04 does include Unity. So we'll log in. It'll take it just a moment to to set up for the first run. I'm using a virtual box. This is running just a little slow. Oh, our uh, graphics is a little little wacky here. Let's see if we can get it straightened out right fast. Um, this happens sometimes with with virtual box. Let's see. Okay, there we go. But this is Ubuntu 11.04, uh, straight from install with Unity. Uh, you'll notice if you're not using a virtual box, you can get you'll not have the VBox editions icon there on the desktop, and that's just for a disk. But you've got the dash, you've got the, you know, our system settings is still there. Uh, you can go in there, you can change things just like you would in all the other Ubuntu releases. You'll notice the dock bar down the left, and that's it. So tune in for our next video, uh, which will cover how to scale Unity back to Unity 2D, or how to just straight boot into Ubuntu Classic. Thanks for watching.